here. Okay. So as, as I said, welcome to the fourth uh, in the series of exploring group project administration. Today, we're gonna to talk about useful tools for group project administrators. And what I thought I would start, because that's a very broad subject. And we talk a lot, if you're on social media and you've asked questions about tools and so on, everybody has opinions, everybody has their, their favorites, everybody has the ones that they think are outdated or you know have been superseded and so on. And tools is kind of a generic, uh, uh, there's no, there's no easy definition of tools. So I thought I would throw out just some boundaries about what I'm going to be talking about today. That doesn't mean there aren't more out there. So what I'm not planning to talk about today, for one thing, is the features within the testing company screens, whether it's family tree DNA, whether it's WIFO, whether it's others. I'm not going to go into detail about what options you have available within the testing company's uh, site when you log on as a tester, for instance. So for instance, Family Tree DNA has the block tree. It's a very nice tool. It's a very good thing, but I'm not going to talk about the block tree because it's kind of assumed that you've already stumbled across that and you know it's there and you know how to use it and so on. That may not be true, in, in which case you want to explore that a little bit more. I'm just saying I'm not covering it today per se because there's a lot of other things, mostly third-party tools to talk about. I will certainly cover some of the more useful ones like the Discover tool from Family Tree DNA, like some of the other tools out there that are offered by testing companies because they're useful and you can often make use of those no matter where you've tested. But um, so I am going to I am going to talk about some of them. But just bear in mind, there's more than what I'll cover today that's available through the interfaces that are provided by the testing companies. I'm not going to talk about the other sites that are available where you can share data and upload and compare them with other people or get analysis help from them and so on. They're useful at certainly places like the the ones that are best known are the YDNA warehouse, certainly YFOL. Or, uh, or even um, there's a site called mitoydna.org that's free and that offers some comparison uh, uh, options and some tools within them. That's more of a, of a side thing when you want to share data when you're comfortable with that and you're looking for help with the analysis. It's not a tool that you can just use yourself. Most of the other, virtually all of the tools I'll talk about, in fact, I think all of the tools I'll talk about today are free. They're freely available. They don't share data. They're, they've been used for, you know, for, for usually more than a decade, sometimes more than two, and uh, have been well known in the community for a long time. So I'm not covering anything that's brand new or that's questionable or that, you know, there are, by the way, there are a lot of tools that are starting to become available uh, from sites in China. Um, from other areas and certainly outside of the family tree DNA structure and so on. I don't know a lot about them. I'm not going to tell you they're bad. I'm not covering them here mainly because I don't have experience with them. So bear in mind, again, what I said before, I'm not covering every tool that's out there today. I'm just covering the ones that I know have been used a lot. They're, they're useful to a lot of people I know, so it's not just me. Um, but there is more than that. And if you have a favorite that I don't cover, if you see something, by all means, jump in at the end of this little, you know, uh, of the little spiel that I have and, and add it to the list because I'd be happy to know that there's something out there that I don't know about. Um, there are, the other thing is when you get SNP testing, if you get Big Y or a WGS test that covers SNPs, you have access to tools that, or you can get access to tools that allow you to read a BAM file directly. And some people do this. Um, it's more of a specialized uh, um, uh, thing to do. You, you do have to know something about the genetics and the structure of chromosomes and ways to, to read it and make sense of it. But there are some out there. IGV is the Integrative Genomic Browser, I think. Uh, there's WGS Extract and SAM Tools, which is a combined set of things. Randy Haar uses this a lot, as do others who do a lot with, the, with the, the detailed files that are provided by NGS tests. Uh, there's what's called the US, UCSC Genome Browser, which I actually am going to talk about as a resource because you can look at the reference genome with it, but, um, but it also allows you to upload a BAM file or a VCF file or other files that you get out of your testing and examine those in a little bit more detail. That's very useful if you want to get to that level of detail. I'm not covering that level of detail here today. And then, of course, there's a lot of tips and tricks that people use. There's forums that people ask questions on. There's educational resources people go to. There's websites out there where people like to go and find information and so on. Those are all great as well. They're not tools in that sense. And because I have limited time today, I'm not covering everything under the sun. So I'm skipping those as well. So just to give you an idea of where, when I was putting this together, I kind of defined those as we'll hold those later. 
there's a lot of useful information in a lot of those things that I just glossed over. Don't think that, that, that's, uh, uh, that that's not useful. It's just not part of what I'm talking about today. Um, this chart is something I just about a week ago put a five minute video out on the channel that these um, that these videos are on. If you want to take a look at it, if you want to, um, this is just how I draw the group project administrator function. So I break it into three main areas. One is just at the bottom in red is the, is the general project administration, keeping the website active, keeping stuff up to date, you know, posting things on there, the um, managing the activity feed, that sort of thing. Um, in blue, in the upper right, is the analysis functions, right? It's getting into the genetics of it. It's understanding what a kit is telling you, helping a member understand why they match another member here but not there, um, understanding if a SNP is good or not, kind of getting into that detail, uh, as well as analyzing your subgroups, figuring out who's related to whom, how the branching worked, mapping that to genealogies and uh, assessing subgroup origins and a lot of the other things that we do as project administrators to kind of make sense of all the data that we were confronted with. And then over in the green, of course, is once you have all that analysis, you're communicating it back out to your members. You're helping them understand what they got out of their tests. You're helping them understand what new insights or new things that they've that that you've been able to deduce about their subgroup, you're helping them understand where they should go next, what they should do, if they should upgrade, if they should find another tester, if they should get someone you know, far away to test or close to test and so on. And you're also probably going to recruit new members and doing other things yourself. So there's that's I, I sort of break it down into those three areas. Now I'm gonna get even more complicated on you um, because if I take that and I take a whole bunch of tools. So the pink things are tools. And I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail. I'll get into some of the details of this, but this is kind of the overview chart, right? So I took a whole bunch of tools and I sorted them into categories and I tracked them back to the functions of a group project admin and said, this is kind of where I see these tools fitting in. Now, some of these tools have multiple purposes, right? Um, a tool may be good at drawing a tree structure, and that's a good analysis tool, but it also helps to communicate with your members because you can take that tree structure and send it to them. So that so that would serve dual purposes. For the most part, in some cases, I've drawn these white lines to uh, you know to several boxes that help. But in most cases, I've I've just put a tool into the major function that I think it it, it uh, fulfills. But those of you who have used a lot of these tools will know that you've used them for different purposes as well. So if I go around, you know, I'll, I'll start down in, in the red. The only tool that I know of that really helps with project administration, this is the mechanics, right? It's keeping websites up and doing things, is the gap, the interface itself that's provided by Family Tree DNA for the most part. There are a few tools that are available uh, um, in the groups that are provided by WIFL, but the groups that uh, that are offered by Family Tree DNA obviously have a lot more structure to them. Now we all complain about certain things that aren't done well or the slowness of it and so on. It's about a 20 year old system right now, so it could stand some upgrades, but it's the best we've got. And I think it's they've done a pretty good job and I have to give them kudos for popularizing, as I said, the project administration function with that interface. So that's really the only tool, the only third party tool I know that does a lot of that stuff. Although if I come around counterclockwise, group sorting and predictors, this is where you're taking, you're either breaking a, a group into, you know, who's related to whom and where are the subgroups, or you're trying to, to take a brand new uh, tester and say, where do they belong? So there's a few tools for doing this. I'll talk about those in detail. They're, they're on here, but I'm not gonna ask you to read all this. I'm just giving you the broad categories now. If I go up a little bit, there's a whole bunch of subgroup analysis that help us analyze our information. So some of it is what they call TMRCA tools, right? That's a, that, that stands for time to most recent common ancestor. And it's the tools that do the age estimation for how far back the, the, the common ancestor is for a subgroup or for any two pair of testers. Um, when you're talking about Y DNA, this is done obviously back thousands of years. And the question is, are they related in a time frame that I care? Are they related too far back? Are they going to help me break through a brick wall? Are they going to help me at all? You know, are are they related when I don't think they are, you know, and, and so on. So, um, and, and there's a number of different tools. They're mostly either 
um, um, they're, they're estimating either based on SDRs or on SNPs. There's different kinds, but there's a lot there as well. Um, if I go up, uh, the Philo geography tools, those are the tools that map the SNP trails, the migration tools, the ones that estimate based on the current set of testers, where the SNPs have, have been in their history and when that happened. So they combine the age analysis with a mapping of the likely path that those ancestors took to reach us. Um, there's various ways of doing that. We'll talk about those in a second. Subgroup analysis is the more general, what's the branching within this subgroup? How does this work? Um, you know, who's related to whom, uh, who shares a SNP? And obviously the block tree is a big part of that. Outside of the block tree, there's other tools available. We'll talk about that as well. There are obviously tools that help us just with individual kits. That's mostly, out because there's only two of them there, that's mostly the chromosome browser. So I said that I wouldn't mention um, the, uh, the the functions within uh, the, 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 the the various testing companies. But the chromosome browser within the Family Tree DNA site allows us also to open up the BAM file, if you will, and read the detailed reads and read how many. And so that's useful information that I thought it was was certainly worth calling out. You can get some of that information from YFL as well. Um, so those are actually both uh, uh, good tools to make use of for individual kit analysis. Also, the BAMS Away extension, I'll talk about that, um, is, is, a Chrome, is a Chrome and Microsoft Edge browser extension that allows you to read any individual position. So that's kind of a, it, it opens up those tools to more of a BAM file reader function than, than, the, than the, the, the basic tool was. And then over on the far left, you've got visualization and charting tools which are more kind of how you present things back to your members. You draw them, obviously you could use Excel, you can use PowerPoint, you can use paint, you can use lots of things to draw pictures for people. You can do it by hand and scan them in if you wanna put it in a PDF. But the point being that there are tools that people have found useful. They're not genetic genealogy tools for the most part. They're, they're tools that just allow us to draw boxes and connections and show data in ways that make sense to us and hopefully make sense to our members. All right. A lot of information on this chart. I mostly just wanted to go through the high level. Again, as I go through the detail here, I'm not going to give you an in-depth uh, explanation of every tool or uh, or any coaching on how to use it per se. I'm just going to tell you that it's useful, and um, you may want to pull it up and uh, um, and and play with it. And just so that you have it, give me a quick second. And I took. Um, all of the links to all or the the actual pages for all of the tools that I'll be talking about here are in a PDF that I put out there there. So if everybody got that, hopefully that's a link to a PDF that has a, a link to every tool that I'll be talking about here today. So if you don't know where something is, hopefully I'm going to hit tools you've already come across. If I don't and you want to know where it is, you can use that reference to find it. I'll also put that in the comments uh, against the video online. So if you don't see it, you can always go back to the channel, <coughs> excuse me, and find it there. Okay, so now we're gonna skip that and just talk about some of these tools. So like I said, the gap administration function, there is there are groups in WIFL. There is obviously the Family Tree DNA Gap Interface, which is the bulk of it. If you're doing your own website and presenting your results back that your results back that way, which a lot of people do, I just happen to steal this example from the Maxwell clan, who does a lot of DNA analysis. They've got an extensive genealogy and a very close mapping to the SNPs and the STR um, um, that have broken up since their since the start of the Maxwell clan. So they've done a lot of work on their own website to show that off to their members and to other people. If you do those, obviously you're working with your own tools. You may be working with WordPress supporting your website. You may be working with other things. Those aren't genetic genealogy tools per se, and I'm not covering them here. But um, those three groups are kind of the general breakdown of project administrators. And obviously most of us are in the project um, the, the family tree DNA structure, and we'll make use of those tools. There's not a lot else to do just basic website management that I know of, apart from if you're spinning your own thing, like the Maxwell's did or like anybody else does, and then you'd be doing your own thing on that, right? But there's no real genetic genealogy tools for supporting that. Um, if I look at group sorting and predictors, so these are the ones that allow you to take that say, you know, who's, 
who's more close? Oh, so I've got a group that are all end in the same surname. I want to put them all together and see how many subgroups I have. Well, you can use the YDNA family grouping tool for that. You can use the YSeq clade finder for that. You can use NevGen or you can use Morley in order to predict from STRs what likely SNPs uh, a tester may have. So if you have a tester that's only tested um, in the STRs, you can plug their STRs into there and it'll tell you with a fair degree of detail. They're, they're better at it or they're more detailed at it, I would say, than family tree DNA is when a tester tests only STRs and gets back an R-M269 estimate on their haplogroup, group, that's because family tree DNA is fairly conservative at estimating those. They probably could get more detail if they, if they wanted to try, but they don't want to take the chance of being wrong and then getting the bad PR of, you tested, you told me I was this, and it, and it turned out that I wasn't. You don't know what you're doing, right? I mean, obviously that's a risk for them. Whereas if, you, if we have a third party tool that does it, then we're looking at it as, well, that's probably true, but I don't know for sure. So I better test in more detail to find out, right? So it's a little bit of, of a risk that, that is taken by the testing companies that, that is not there if we're, if we're playing with our own third party tools. So I kind of understand that. But anyway, the point is you can get a more detailed prediction there than you can get either from 23andMe or from, uh, or from Family Tree DNA for people who have only tested STRs. And then you also have Robert Casey. I'll give a shout out for him um, uh, about his L21 predictor tool, which has been around for a long time. He's updated it many times. And if you're in the our L21 structure, he's very good about getting a detailed uh, 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 SNP prediction. Um, but obviously, it depends on what what your area of the haplotree is. Um, it's not broad outside of the, uh, the general R1B structure. So anyway, um, by the way, I should give a shout out. I mean, I have the SAP tools. They've been around for a while, too. And I am going to talk about them here. Um, but we have uh, Rob Spencer, Hunter Proven, Brad Larkin, a lot of folks who have done tools for a long time and done many tools. There's also folks that did tools a long time ago, like Felix Emanuel, Whit Athey, and some of the others. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's uh, Doug McDonald, who did the McDonald predictor. Um, a lot of people have done really good tools and have been out there for a while. I know Rob Spencer and Hunter Proven, for the most part, are doing new tools all the time. They may come out with new tools while I'm talking about these, by the way. So, um, you know, that's, that's, I would just give a shout out to those folks who have supported the genetic genealogy community, especially on the YDNA side, for many years, for more than decades, um, and uh, have provided them all for free. So, you know, the SAP tool's out there too, but it's by no means the only one. There's a lot of people doing good tools out there, which just sort of, I think, lends to the fact that these tools are needed and we probably need them in other areas too. Um, the other subgroup analysis tools besides SAP, I'll talk about that in a minute. There's the STR match finder from Hunter Proven that allows you to put in, um, that allows you to go out, it, sorry, it goes out and it looks in public uh, YDNA um, uh, projects for people that may match you so that you can look for matches. Obviously, if you have matches within your system, you find them that way. But these are people that may be beyond those match structures and may still match you. So you may want to use that in order to find people to invite to your project. You've got Rob Spencer's Snip Tree Explorer, which gives you um, a good mapping of the haplotree and age analysis and surname analysis around it and so on. So as you're getting started, if you need a broad uh, view of a particular haplogroup or something, you can use that. It's always useful. The Discover tool that's out there that they just released a few months back about the group time tree. So, that, you know, not the haplogroup one, but the group time tree that takes projects and breaks down uh, in the time tree structure and gives you a lot of detail about those and a lot of tools to analyze those is a nice addition as well. That and Because those also tie it to... Um, to uh, to ancient digs if they found bones that are related or it shows you how far back you have to go before you find people that uh, that were found during uh, anthropology exercises that may match you you know still thousands of years ago but maybe close at least so you know that your Y DNA was in that area at that time whether or not you're directly descended from that's another question but anyway the point is you can find those out through those tools and that's a useful feature if you're exploring the older origins of your subgroup. Um, but it also gives you pictures, like I said before, this also gives you pictures that you can share with your members. It may be a nice way to explain it to them and so on. So there's other uses for these tools as well. 
Um, SAP has three tools in it. I'll cover them. I mean, I, I, like I said, I can't get into every tool and all the details. Um, the the main purpose of SAP on the far on the far left here is uh, to draw boxes that connect a subgroup. Um, I don't, by the way, call SAP a a uh, group sorting tool in terms of getting your entire project sorted into subgroups. You can use it for that, but generally it's for analyzing individual subgroups. Once you analyze it at a much higher level going back thousands of years, you know, you're going to hit uh, convergence with STRs if you don't have SNPs. If you do have SNPs, you're going to get huge, you know, tree pictures that are hard to, to analyze in detail. So, you know, I, I think SAP has a purpose. I just don't think it's a specifically a group sorting tool. It's more of a subgroup analysis tool to me. Anyway, um, but it allows you to put SNPs, STRs, and uh, some genealogy information together. It will draw the most likely tree that it thinks out of those, and it gives you a chance at least to bounce that off of your known genealogies and say, okay, oh, well, that's reasonable or it's not. And if that's reasonable, then that means these these mutations, either STRs or SNPs, happened around this area. So I know these people should be positive if they if they upgrade or test or so on and so forth. So it gives you some ability to plan as well as maybe turn around and share that picture with your uh, with your members to show them what the combination of their information has been able to provide to you. SNP tree is aligned with the family tree DNA uh, haplotree structure. So you know, obviously this is a it's a shout out to Family Tree DNA for making that available, but it draws it as a tree picture. And if you've seen any of the pictures, like the middle thing here, with I mean, um, um, somebody once called them cactus charts because they kind of look like a cactus if they, as they're growing up. But anyway, um, but uh, um, they they kind of map the that part of the haplo tree. Obviously, the haplo tree is way too big to map out on one page in any detail. But the idea here is if you have a smaller piece of it that you want to map out and show people, you can draw it that way. Um, it gives you just a nice one page view of a particular area of the haplotree. That's the only function that it provides. And then CSV analysis is for folks that have uh, that have big Ys or have tested with e either full genomes or others. You can put all those together, see who has uh, SNPs in common, um, what SNPs may define branches of the subgroup or what SNPs are specific to individual um, to, to individual testers. It also tells you if the region of those SNPs in the Y chromosome is a good region according to various definitions. So you can use that to kind of assess whether or not you want to use certain SNPs for branching determination. If, for instance, family tree DNA hasn't called them uh, yet, maybe they're useful, or maybe you want to get your members to test for those SNPs individually because you want to know whether or not that one defines a subbranch and so on. You can do that kind of exploration through that tool. Um, so that's, like I said, there's a lot of information available for how to use SAP. I'm not going to go into all the details here, um, but certainly uh, if, the, if the available videos and things aren't enough for you on, on the use of any of those tools, give me a shout. I'm happy to help. Um, the TMRCA stuff that I talked about. Now, obviously, SAP does TMRCAs, and that's in the middle here. Uh, when If you don't turn the, the function off, each of the boxes that connects uh, the kits has an estimate. Um, the other ones that are based on STRs only, SAP is based on STRs, although it, it's got the branching structure of the SNPs, if you've put that in, to help guide that. Um, the ones that are purely based on STRs, the, the McGee utility is old, but still useful. Uh, the, the Doug McDonald tool is a little more generic. It doesn't take your specific data, but it gives you an idea. Sorry, it does take your data, but it's it's a it's based on genetic distance. So it kind of gives you the 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 high and low of where genetic distance came. I, I'm sorry, the high and low of what genetic distance is likely uh, to tell you about when uh, two members are related to each other. Now, those are very wide. Um, uh, the, the, they are generally very wide ranges. And a part of the use of the of the McDonald tool there is to is to show people how wide that really is. Because people come back and say, well, I have a genetic distance of three. Does that mean that I'm related to my ancestor? But I mean, to this person back at the expected ancestor in the 1600s? Short answer is maybe, um, because that could be anywhere from 
you know, four to 20 generations back. And that doesn't give you enough detail to really narrow it down. But that tool actually is useful if you're trying to show that kind of range, because you can explain to people that statistically, there's a wide range in which those things can fall. So anyway, but now that we have the, the, the discover tool, which is on the far right here, it's probably um, the most, the one that's most, that is based on the most detailed information because it includes STRs and SNPs in recent time frames. It doesn't go back, I think, more than about a thousand years with SNP with, with STRs, but that's usually appropriate because STRs get too noisy on long uh, expanses of time to be able to be reliable. Um, but it uses the SNPs as well for longer ex ex expanses of time. And it goes across the haplotree. And since family tree DNA has the most extensive haplotree, they have the most information available to do that kind of analysis. So right now I would say probably if I had to pick one tool that was the best we have, it's probably the family tree DNA discover tool. All of these other tools though, including the YFOL approach are perfectly good mathematical you know, tools. And everybody likes to come back and say, well, STRs didn't work for me, SNPs did, or SNPs didn't work for me, STRs did. The point is that happens because everybody is in a different part of the statistical curve as to whether or not STRs are performing as expected for you or SNPs are. And in many cases, one isn't, but the other one is. And you want to find out which one that is and then rely on it. So if you start seeing that STRs are giving you wildly, you know, completely wrong estimates, you start to understand that STRs in your case are probably not applicable and you want to look only at SNPs. The other way also works and people have found the same thing. So, you know, generally that's the way every conversation on social media plays out when I see this. People talk about, well, that tool doesn't work for me. It's too old. It doesn't work. People go, no, it worked great for me. And they argue about it. And I was like, the answer is, well, that that's normal. <laughs> it's That's the way it works. People, some people it will work great for, some people it won't. And any tool that'll be the case for. So just bear that in mind as you look through your own subgroups. You know, generally that's true for a subgroup because the SNPs have on the common lines have behaved abnormally or whatever. It's not just on somebody's private line. Um, although if you have a subgroup where the private lines extend for a thousand years or something, it could happen there too. But the point being that these tools don't apply to everybody always. And the fact that we have multiple tools is good because you want to work with them. If one tool doesn't work for you, you know, if you want to just use the discover tool, great. It's a perfectly good tool. It's a very good tool. It works nicely. Uh, if it doesn't work for you, that may be, be, be because your group isn't performing as statistically expected. And you want to maybe look at another tool that gets closer to what you think those, I mean, you got to be careful not to do confirmation bias here either, right? Just because you expect that they all relate back to an ancestor at this point in time doesn't mean they do. But you can generally get a good sense once you start putting the data together if the predictions are coming out the way you would expect them to or if there might be a problem here and you may want to look at a different way to analyze it. So the fact that we have multiple tools available is actually a good thing in my mind. The Philo geography tools, I, there are a few more than this, but I'll call out four of them. One is SNP Tracker. It's been probably around the longest. I think that was the one that was first available. That's Rob Spencer's tool. Uh, the two by Hunter Proven, there's the YSeq Clade Finder that operates off of the YFOL tree. So if you're if you're more aligned with the YFOL tree, that's a, that's a very good one to use. Um, that does a similar thing to the SNP Tracker tool that plots the ancient migration paths. There's a heat map version of distribution of a haplogroup around um, that's also provided by Hunter Proven. And then, of course, there's the migration maps feature from Discover from the Family Tree DNA structure that gives you their version of, of something similar. So those are all phylo geog they're all uh, as, um, sorry, phylogeographical tools that give you maps. For me, those maps are mostly so that I can show them to my members. I like to use them for graphics and so on. I would caution people, though, do not place a, a huge amount of reliance on the age assessments or the paths that they took. Those are general population level migration maps that are likely but not proven. Um, and so it's what the data has shown us so far. We only have less than a million people, uh, less than a million men tested so far with YDNA out of the, you know, uh, three and a half to four billion men on the planet. So 
Uh, it's going to take a lot more data before we're, you know, before the, we can have confidence in those kinds of tools. And there's no guarantee, even if we get the population level migrations right, that any of our ancestors took those paths. If there's one thing that we've learned from Y-DNA testing, it's that our ancestors were a lot more inventive and a lot more mobile than we give them credit for. Um, so, you know, I may be an Irish line, but maybe my Irish line spent most of its time in, in you know, in, in Sweden until it came. And so all of my ancestors most recently came from Sweden, right? There's lots of ways that this stuff can flow. So don't treat it as the exact path that your ancestors walked. It's just a good start at our understanding where these different haplogroups spent their time, you know, in, in aggregate. So with that caution, they're very useful tools. Um, the, the way that I define the visualization and charting tools is the ones that really don't have much to do with genetic genealogy itself. They're not operating off of, off of data to produce a tree like SAP, except that they're, um, that they're producing a tree structure based on the structure that you give them in order to help you explain what you've been able to find. So Phylop, for instance, is a phylogeographical tool, which means that you provided data and it draws a tree. Um, you can do something very similar through Lucidchart, which a lot of people like. Uh, uh, Scapple is a new tool that was just put out um, uh, on, on social media. I believe it's been used for a while, but somebody just sort of popularized that in some of the social media forums, which was nice. I use iThoughts. It's a mind mapping tool, but, it, but it's an easy way to put together charts and do subtrees and structures. Um, and I can, I, can, I can close branches and open other ones to look at things. And it's just an easy way for me to keep track of things. Um, so I'm putting that one out there just because I find it useful. And then the Interactive Tree of Life is a website, the link is in that PDF that I, that I sent out, um, that is a nice way of showing a large tree structure. They do it circular, they do it straight down. I just picked the circular version because it's pretty, um, but you can do a lot of nice things to show off to your members. I have a circular map of my entire sub name, uh, my, my entire surname group. All 16 of the, of the subgroups are mapped on one chart with the circle. I mean, it's impossible to read the individual kits, but the point is the relationships between all the subgroups. And um, so I've made a nice pretty chart that I can put out there for my members to look at and see where they belong, you know, within the context of everyone who has an R last name. It's just a nice way to get people to understand that there's value in the aggregate data and the group analysis that we've been able to do. Um, and I'm way over time, so I'm going to try to speed it up here. But the reference sites, there's a combination of things. For one thing, Genetic Homeland is uh, is a nice reference site. It has the haplogroup structure. It can translate, if you know what I'm talking about, it can translate RSIDs, reference um, SNP IDs, into our standard SNP names like, like RL21 or RM269 and so on. Um, if you're into analyzing the reference genome and the details of the Y chromosome, there's the Genome Reference Consortium, there's dbSNP, which also can help you translate uh, the RSIDs into our standard SNP naming conventions. The USC Genome Browser I talked about before, which can read BAM files, but it also can show you areas of the Y chromosome that can help you understand whether or not there's genes there, if there's, uh, if there's areas that are more easily readable than others and so on. Uh, I put Rob Spencer's admin tools into the structure because they're a way to visualize the Y DNA haplotree. Obviously, family tree DNA and Y fools haplotree structures belong in this as well. I just didn't put them on the list. Um, and, and then you've got um, uh, the tool that a lot of us go to whenever we want to look up an STR or a SNP, Y Browse, which is maintained by Thomas Cron. Uh, that's an invaluable reference of, I think they're up to something like 2.4 million SNPs and STRs, um, almost all SNPs, um, that, uh, that uh, have position references, um, some haplotree reference in terms of where they sit on the haplotree, um, the, the, the ancestral and the derived um, 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 mutational values, nucleotide values, and so on. So there's a ton of information in that, in that guide um, that's very useful to anybody who's doing a lot of detailed analysis of SNPs and STRs. Um, so anyway, that's uh, a, a lot of those tools. 
if you lose this video entirely, if you don't remember anything else about what I'm saying, a lot of these tools are available from the ISOGG's reference um, page that's at this link. The, that link is also in the PDF, but I put it here just so people can see it. Um, and um, uh, it's got uh, almost all of these tools, plus a lot of older ones that I didn't put into this presentation. Um, but those are often useful to, uh, to go back to and find links. And whenever I have to look up a tool, I generally start here first when I don't remember where it is. So I just wanted to put a shout out to this page as well, because it's a, it's a, it's a very useful place to go if you're trying to find a particular tool. Um, so that was the overview chart that I started with. I'm gonna take a pause here. I'm gonna leave this up, but let anybody chime in if I didn't cover your tool, if you wanna talk about it at all. Going once, going twice, come on. Who has a tool out there that you use all the time that I didn't talk about it at all? No. Who developed Bamsaway? That's a very good question, Lucy. She put that question in the, in, in the chat. I honestly have no idea. Um, Steve, that's a good point. That's the IGV. I think that's um, that's the integrated genome um, uh, uh, browser. I didn't talk about that um, because that's a detailed BAM file reader, but yes, it is very useful. And for folks who want to get into that level of detail, it's invaluable. Um, I, 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 I have to hand it to both the YDNA, the, the YDNA warehouse as well as WIFL both because they created, um, you know, entire uh, websites and functions out of BAM file readers. Um, but if you want to do it yourself, that's a good place to do it. Um, and um, I did not talk about MITRE YDNA's tool structures, but if you share your data there, that has a lot of good integrated tools as well. Good point, Wesley. Thank you. Um, and so, Lucy, back to your question. I have no idea who developed BAMS away. I think it's listed in the extension uh, information if you if you look there, but I don't remember. Um, and um, uh, I've heard that there's a new migration map that's a phylogeographical tool that should be coming out by Family Tree DNA. I don't know when or any details on it. So I've heard that sort of through the grapevine that there's one that might be coming, but I haven't seen any details. Um, so I, I don't know if that's real or not, to be honest. But. Okay, thank you for those. Um, oh, okay, Mags mentioned it. Okay, um, good to know, thanks. A top three or five recommended tools. See, oh, that's a tough one, Stephen, because um, out of all of these, the ones that I use the most, well, I have to throw SAP in there, it's my own tool, and I use it the most, probably in part because I know it the best, so I have to be careful you know, to, to throw that out there, but to be quite honest, I created it in part for a challenge to other tools makers to create something equivalent, and I've not seen anything quite equivalent yet. So I'm not going to tell you it's the best things out there at all, because I think it has a place in the pantheon of tools, so to speak. But there's nothing else that I know of that does subgroup analysis you know, from, from all three of our information sources, STR, SNPs, and genealogy data. And I'd love to see others take a stab at that, but until then, it's the only thing that does that. So when I have to do that, which is fairly often, I do use SAP all the time. Um, so that, uh, unfortunately, I have to throw that out there, even though it, it you know, it, it seems completely self-serving. Other than that, um, I think the Discover tool has has become a top, you know, three tool for me. Uh, it's obviously much newer, but it's one that I've been using more and more. Uh, I do use Giphy um, for autosomal analysis, mostly not YDNA, but yes, they're very interesting tools for 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 uh, graphing and analysis. As far as uh, uh, visualization, I've been using iThoughts a lot, but I'll say any tool that you're comfortable with, you know, like, you, like a lot of people swear by Lucidchart, and I just haven't had the experience with it. I mean, if you like PowerPoint or you're used to PowerPoint, by all means, use that. Right? That's um, do I think AI will eventually help us with reports? Writing them, maybe, you know, like creating, you know, ideas for, for the flow of information, like a structure or something. Yeah, I think those could help us as support tools. 
I doubt I'm ever going to be able to hand over my reporting to members through an AI tool, though. <laughs> that may happen, just not in my lifetime, I'm guessing. <laughs> yes, and thank you, Stephen. GFG is Graphs for Genealogists by David Stump. I have wanted to play with that and never found the time so far. I need to do it. Um, and uh, um, I've, I've, uh, I believe it. I mean, it, it's certainly useful for Ozomal. I've seen the, the, the information based on that. I don't know how, if, if it's applicable for YDNA, it may very well be. It probably is. I just haven't gotten into the details of figuring that out. Um, Bill, okay, thanks, Bill. That's good to know. I mean, BAMS away, you're right. I do use BAMS away all the time as well. Uh, and and yes, Ybrows as the primary reference of all of those that I put there on the reference, I think Ybrows is the one that I go to the most often. So yeah, for sure. Um, DNA uh, uh, GedCon or GedCon, yes, that, that that that's a good one as well. Again, I think that's that's autosomal. The one thing I didn't talk about is if you're integrating autosomal with YDNA, especially right. I mean, a lot of people do very good work by combining those. I have not. I don't have a tool that I would recommend if you're doing that specifically, just because all of these tools have some aspect of, you know, a piece of that, but I don't know of a tool that allows you to combine those two automatically and do it for you. Even SAP doesn't do that. It doesn't have a function for autosomal data. Um, but, um, but anyway, so that might be an area that a new tool would be helpful if we had something that, that did more cross, you know, um, that, that helped integrate. There are obviously, if you go through, for instance, family tree DNA. If you go through the reports, you can, you know, filter by different pieces of it and so on, and you can combine the look of autosomal or at the family finder tests with the big Y test or whatever, and you can do a lot of analysis that way. That's about the only place that I can think of that you can actually combine both sets of data into one analysis thing. But a lot of people do very good work without it. And and by the way, I mean, a lot of people do very good work with Excel too. I've seen lots of really interesting stuff done with the basic Excel tool. So I don't want to, I just don't consider that a, a third-party genetic genealogy tool, although I do use it all the time as well. But uh, you know, to, um, to, certainly I, I would put that on, uh, 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 if you're not familiar with spreadsheets, I would say that's a good thing to learn because it comes in handy right, for anything that you're doing. Um, okay, so what else is there, folks? All right, well, since I'm over time, I will pause the recording or stop the recording Question a bit, I was expecting a, bit, a book release. Hold that thought and I'll talk about it in a second. <laughs>